So you remember that china cabinet that I picked up at Facebook Marketplace that I mentioned in my last home goods haul? Well, today we are finally going to start its beautification process. I am super excited and super nervous. This is actually going to be my very, very first furniture upcycle um, DIY project. So I'm definitely very nervous. You guys know that I am such a perfectionist, so I want this to come out as beautifully as I can, as I'm envisioning it in my head. I have been wanting to replace the shelf that we have in our dining in our dining area that is our current bar. It's kind of just small and there's no storage. It really is just like a glass tabletop and then a single shelf underneath it. So I really, really wanted a sideboard to put in that space. My ideal sideboard is from Wayfair and it's $2,500. And I am not about to shell out no $2,500 for a sideboard. <laughs> so I picked up this china cabinet for only $20. That's the hutch. Luckily, the hutch wasn't actually attached. It just rested on top of this lower cabinet. So it came clean off, which is incredible. So that was a huge score. This is going to be the ultimate bougie on a budget project. I'm kind of thinking this might be the start of a really exciting new hobby slash journey in my life. So I'm excited to see how it comes out. But you guys, seriously check out how beautiful the detailing is on this. This is why I decided to pick up this piece. I love details. I'm all about the details. You can see the gorgeous little nail head trim these knobs I'm going to be replacing and then down here this framework I'm obsessed with I did want to change out these knockers but because this part right here is actually glued on instead of being screwed on we can only remove this actual knocker and not the pendant behind it I'm gonna just end up keeping this and spray painting it gold. Even the, the sides on this cabinet, that framework, that's beautiful. That's what's going to make it look really luxurious. All of these little details, it's not just like flat panels of wood. So I'm excited to see it come together. The first thing we're going to do is screw off these knobs and then just clean it out. I have my Clorox wipes. I'm basically just going to wipe down the whole thing take off these knockers as well and then once it's all wiped down then we can come back tomorrow and prime it tomorrow because it is 11 p.m <laughs> i am doing another diy project in the middle of the night while layla's sleeping because that's just what i have to do so <laughs> i'm trying to use all the time that i can while she's asleep anyways let me go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we'll check back tomorrow. Okay, so I removed the drawers, the cabinet doors. I took off the hinges. These are both of the drawers, all of the doors. <laughs> the doors are sitting on Pampers boxes. That's how much of a mom I am. But I figured they're supposed to be like propped up onto something so I could paint the sides, right? I don't know, you guys. I'm kind of just winging this. Um, I took all of the knobs off and the knockers you can see all our hardware right there this i found out was actually it looks like it's just nailed on with these two nails here but i can't get it off with a regular um, hammer like that the back part of the hammer and i'm scared of you know using like a little chisel or whatever to pull this up because i don't really want to damage the wood around it so i'm just going to leave this on and i'm going to have to use painter's tape and tape this up but um, I'm gonna go ahead and start priming it after I tape that let me show you this is the back of our car this is my current workstation um, some of the stuff I borrowed from my parents like the rollers and paint trays which is why they look a little used and also the sandpaper I used just a 220 grit sandpaper just to sand 
a couple minor areas here and there of the cabinet but not too much honestly the woman at Lowe's said I wouldn't really have to sand the whole thing I can just prime it first so I picked up this stain blocking bonding primer and sealer I'm gonna do a single coat of that per her suggestion and then I picked a blue you guys I know it's a miracle I got this Valspar furniture paint this says no sanding as well. It even says prime, no priming, but I'm going to prime it anyway. And this supposedly self levels, which gives me so much peace of mind. Cause again, this is my first time doing this and I'm really hoping not to see all of those brush strokes. So hopefully this works. Ooh, look at that blue. That's the blue I picked. Dyed indigo is what it's called. It's kind of bold. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm excited. I also picked up tack cloth, which I used after sanding. This basically collects all the dust and sand after you're done sanding. So I just had to use that, you know, for a quick few seconds. I also picked up this copper spray paint, which I'm going to be using to spray paint all the hardware. I was originally going to do gold, but then after thinking about it, I, we already have a few gold accents in our living room and I feel like mixing up the metals might be nice. Let's get to priming. I think I'm just going to use my paintbrush and then dip it in there. Or do you think I need to use a roller? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, you guys, we got it primed, the cabinets and the doors and tape. There are so many grooves here. It took so long to get in these little crevices. I tried to do it as neatly as I could, but it seems a little, oh, maybe I should sand this down. It seems a little bit like I could have done it neater, hopefully it won't be too big of a deal. I also realized that I didn't tape up a lot of things before I started priming I guess I don't know it just didn't come natural to me to think about that but I mean you're not gonna be able to see this anyway right I'm probably just gonna tape over it now before I do the blue and then even over here with the tape that I did here it was kind of almost an afterthought you can see that I didn't even tape these sides of it well for here I guess you won't see it with the drawers but maybe I'll just add tape there now too. As you can see, I also ended up painting over these crests. I originally tried taping them up, but it was kind of hard to just get this exact shape. And I did have a sharp edge, but I didn't really want to end up scoring the wood. I figured it's fine if I get paints over this. I can always just, I mean, I'm going to spray paint it anyway, so it'll cover it. Maybe I could sand it down if I needed it to. And I figured it would be easier to just paint this. And then when I'm going to go to spray paint this, have it have the tape around here um I don't know again I'm kind of just winging this and hoping for the best but I just wanted to point that out that I did end up taping or painting these instead of just trying to figure a way to tape them properly and the reveal Ooh, that's actually a lot brighter than I thought it was gonna be but it's pretty. I'm really nervous, but now or never. So we have our large roller brush, our paint tray. I only have the large one. I had a smaller one actually, but we don't know if we have the right um, foam roller size for it. So we're just going to use this large one. I still have my paintbrush and it is time to commit. I'm going to try to get two coats out of this gallon or whatever this is. 29 fluid ounces. Oh, you guys, I remembered. You have to stir it. Would that have been so tragic if I forgot to? What do I do with this stick afterwards? Let's just throw it in there. <laughs> Ooh, how pretty is that? Alright, you guys, I'll keep you updated. See you in a little bit. 
first coat of blue is on. I'm really, really loving the blue now that it's starting to dry and get darker, which is what I wanted, a little bit of a darker blue. How am I feeling about this whole self-leveling business? Um, it looks like it's doing its job. I'm really relying on it. I was getting a little bit nervous because some areas look a little bit splotchy. This lighting in the garage right now is just not working out for this video. Um, but I'm gonna have to show it to you guys again in the daytime. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. These ones are pretty wet. You can see where it looks a little bit splotchy. I'm hoping it'll just like mellow out and by the second coat, it'll be covered and smooth and clean. But I have very high hopes for this, crossing my fingers. All right, you guys, this first coat is dry. It is so blue. Oh my God, I can't believe I, ever, I really did this. But <laughs> I've gone too far to turn back now. I think what I'm gonna do is sand it down just a little bit with a very fine grit sandpaper. There are just little areas where it looks like, I don't know, there were like little, little tiny drips of paint that fell on it or something. So I'm thinking I'm just going to sand it down very, very lightly, and then I'll go in and do the second coat of paint. Obviously, it needs, it definitely needs a second coat of paint. I completely missed that part there. I don't even know how that happened. The doors, you can definitely see the paint strokes which is making me very nervous but again I'm just really really hoping that we just need this second coat of paint to come through and do what it needs to do and we'll be solid all right so this is some leftover um, very very fine 220 grit sandpaper that I'm gonna use to just buff out these little marks want to definitely get all of these bumps out of here and since we have sanded we also want to take our tack cloth again and just wipe down the entire surface to make sure we pick up all of that sanding dust off of our piece before we add that next coat of paint our cabinet has been drying for over a week now and you guys I got my knobs in I can't wait to show you so I'm actually gonna start um, taping these up you can see I did three of the four already and then we're gonna spray paint these crusts and the original knockers and my new knobs that are going on the drawer fronts these are the knobs that I picked up these fierce little lion heads, aren't they amazing? I got these on Amazon, I think, but I also saw the exact same one on Etsy, but it was more expensive on Etsy. I have my hammered copper spray paints, ready to spray paint these bad boys. You guys, check it out. These little circles were the discs behind the original knobs, so I'm gonna reuse those. I think they're gonna look really cool behind the lion hens once it's all the same color. Ooh, I think it's just gonna add another really fun layer and just elements of interest to the piece if I keep those. So I'm super excited that those were part of the original knobs. But let's get to spray painting. I think I'm gonna do two or three coats of this is spray paint but it already looks really pretty when i'm spraying it so i'm just gonna go over, over very lightly maybe from both directions and now for the final coat you guys don't understand how excited i am well i actually i'm gonna have to do more coats on the other side of these guys and those guys but these are the last coats for these crests all right you guys the reveal are you ready for it Ooh la la come on baby nice and clean nice and clean okay it doesn't want to 
reveal. It's so pretty. Okay, guys, I definitely am going to have some touching up to do on the doors. If you notice, I somehow managed to get spray paint on one of the doors and I'm super sad, but hopefully just a small coat of paint will be able to cover that up. We are just going to go ahead and put it all together and then in the ends, once it's all together, then I'm going to go ahead and touch up any parts that I need to touch up. But I'm excited to finally see it all together and hopefully I will be proud that I ended up doing this and think that it was all worth it. But I guess we'll just have to see once it's all together. So the whole touching up process did not go as I was hoping it would go. For some reason, when I touched it up around the crests of those doors, once it was all dried, you can definitely see where I touched it up. And so I ended up retaping those crests and then giving the entire doors just another coat of paint so it was just another step that I had to add to the process. I didn't film that part because I was already getting a little bit frustrated and not very optimistic about this whole project. So I had to give all of those another coat of paint and then let that dry. And then I put the doors on. Wow. Who's that? Who's that beautiful girl? So I don't know why it did that or if that's just always the case when you touch something up. I assumed because I was using the same color it would just blend in perfectly. But again, I've never done this before so I didn't know. Maybe it might be, and this might have been a rookie mistake, but it might be because when I was touching it up I was actually just using the lid of the paint can and then taking the paint from there. I did like swirl it around and mix the paint on the lid, but it probably still didn't have all the pigmentation from the actual can of paint. So that could be the reason why. I'm not sure if you guys know, let me know in the comments. Again, this is a complete learning process for me. Um, but the last coat of paint that I did have to end up adding definitely worked out. I put it all together and now this is the final product. So here it is in its final glory, its resting place, its new home, fully styled and prepped for the bar. We have our Drake's Growler, some wines, this decanter was a gift for our housewarming party. This is my airplane bottle opener. You guys know I'm a flight attendant, so I think this is so much fun to bring on the plane with me when we have beers to open for our guests some other spirits and liqueurs and whatnot. This was a gift my sister got for me from her trip to Japan a couple years ago. Um, these were another housewarming gift. We have our tequilas, this was from our Mexico trip. These two were a baby shower gift. It was part of a parent's survival kit that a friend of ours made for us. So we wanted to keep those as a little memento. And then we, of course, have some beer tasting books and cocktail books as well. We just picked up this elephant from Ross. I'm so obsessed with it. It's like this origami type deal, and I'm in love. Elephants with their trunks up. You want some of those in your house. They're good luck. And then I wanted to point out one last styling detail. Look at how pretty these are. These I picked up from TJ Maxx, so this is a wine stopper. 
and then a corkscrew and it's this beautiful black stone with gold accents and I am in love with them. Okay, so you've already seen how beautiful it is, but since this was my first time doing this kind of a project and I'm taking you through the learning process with me, I was debating showing you this actually, but I want to show you the nitty gritty details of how imperfect it really is because probably from your point of view in the in the camera in the video it looks like I did you know a perfect job <laughs> I'm not trying to pat myself on the back I'm just saying you probably don't see the flaws that I see that's my point so I'm gonna show you the real real of this project and how I did mess up in plenty of places Honestly, it does still need some touching up, but I've already invested so much time into it and I have so many other things to do um, this month with my daughter's birthday coming up. So I just wanted to accept it for what it is now and then probably, you know, make my way back to it when I have time to do any of the other little touch ups. But let me show you some real, some real, real stuff. So you can see here. Um, I did mention when I was doing it that I didn't tape it in the very beginning, which I obviously should have done. Again, rookie mistake. So I taped it after I had already primed it, which is why you can still see a lot of the white here. I'm definitely going to have to touch that up. I'm not really sure the proper way to tape it. Um, if you're supposed to go straight to the edge or like let it go in a little bit so you don't see so much of that wood inside. I need to, you know, do a little bit more research now that I've gone through the process. I also realized that I painted the bottom of this drawer front. I'm not sure if people normally do that, but now with the paint it does seem a little thick and it's a little tight going into this pocket. I'm not sure if it, I don't recall if it was like that when I first got this piece um, but that's something that I have to you know deal with also and again with this you can see that the door is kind of like hitting this top part so it's scraping off the paints which is bugging me so I'm either gonna have to realign these hinges again or I don't know I don't know I don't know you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments below what I should do. What did I learn from doing this project? One, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. It did take a lot more time than I thought it would and patience. Number two, tape everything first. <laughs> that was definitely not just a natural thought when I was going through the motions of this project. Um, and I think I was being, it was probably being a little bit lazy and not wanting to tape up everything, but the next time, if there is a next time I do one of these projects, I would definitely tape up just everything and ahead of time, before the primer, before all of that. Number three would probably be to be more patient with the painting process. I was definitely being more of a perfectionist by the time I was at the second coat. Of blue paint because I figured that was the final coat I really need to be perfect with this final coat but I should have went into it with that mindset for the primer and the first coat as well because if you leave those little bumps from the first and second coat then it'll definitely show under the third coat self-loving self-leveling or not so those are the three things that I learned from this project and um, <laughs> am I proud of it? I am actually pretty proud of it. I'm not so thrilled because it's not perfect. And again, I am a perfectionist, so I wanted it to be perfect, but I love it. I think it looks gorgeous in our home. I love the pop of blue. I love the doorknobs that I picked up and the fact that I went with the copper color instead of the gold. Um, and I think it's just going to add so much needed storage for this area. We can put all of our, you know, serving platters and whatnot in here since this is where we set up the food when we have parties. But that's it. Let me know what you guys think of how I did. Feel free to leave comments below. Let me know if you have some tips for me, 
some suggestions the next time I do go into another big project like this. I would love your help. I am completely a beginner and could use all the help that I can get. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Give this video a huge thumbs up. I put a lot of work into this cabinet. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and that notification button. I do have that hutch still waiting for me in the garage and a fabulous idea for it. I just need to find the time to get around to doing it and I need to kind of refresh my mind from this project before I go into that project. But again, thank you guys so much. I love you guys and I will see you in the next video.